Hey, Kyle. Thank you so much for joining us today for our kickoff meeting. What a treat that we don't often get to have guests at our busy Thursday morning meetings, but we are honored to have you today. So let's just dive in. Here. All right. <laughs> Number one, as Ron has said last year at 24 years old, you declared that you were gunning for the world championship of public speaking. Can you tell us why? What what made that a burning desire for you? I actually declared a while, a lot longer ago, to be honest with you, before I even joined Toastmasters. One of the, the first things I saw on YouTube about Toastmasters was the, the speech contest. And I thought, wow, that'd be really cool to go in and, and do something like that and say that you're the, the world champion. So I initially started for that reason, just because I thought it'd be a fun thing to do. But the more I got into it, the more I realized, wow, this is the fastest way you improve as a speaker, but not only that, as a person at the same time. And it's a great way to, to impact people, to share some value with people. So that, I feel, is the platform the International Speech Contest is, and that's why I love to be part of it. That's a really good response. I like that you said that because when Ron said you're only a Toastmaster for three years and we've got, you know, 10 members waiting to deliver an icebreaker, you know, dive in. We've got that international speech co contest coming up in March. Yeah, nothing to lose, but everything to gain. Totally. All right. Number two, we learn early as Toastmasters that feedback is very key. You delivered your semifinal speech over 70 times last year and your final speech over 40 times. And as we just saw, you request feedback from each and every Toastmaster that hears you. Now, how do you go through all of that feedback and decide what's for you and what's not for you? It's about knowing your, your style, I believe, Misty. Knowing who you are as a speaker, what you're trying to convey, your point, and then looking at the different options you've got available there. The reality is when you deliver a speech, when you work you know, tirelessly on a speech, you become too close to the speech. There'll be people who have maybe filled out the form today that'll point out things I would never have seen. And that's the perspective I need. And then it's about selecting the comments which align with my values, who I am, and what I'm comfortable doing on stage. Because what we all do when we give feedback is we project what we would do onto someone else. It's natural, I do it myself but you just have got to de decipher which parts of that feedback will work for you and leave to decide the parts which, which don't. So it takes a bit of practice. And um, if you've got a panel of people, of people who are close to you, for instance, my girlfriend helps me a lot uh, with deciding what I should do and what I shouldn't do, that can help at the same time too. Nice. I wanna build on the feedback still here because one of our goals at this club, and we've got an amazing Zoom team, and what they do is they record every speaker and then they'll send the link to that recording after our meetings. And then we have the option to download it, save it, load it up onto YouTube. Now I noticed obviously recording it is important to you. You wanna have it yourself. You don't even want you know to give the chance that we might not send it to you. You're like, I want that video. Mm. So can you just talk to our members about why it's so important and what you're doing with those videos? Yeah, well, firstly, it's fantastic that you've got the setup so everybody does receive a recording. Well done, uh, the Zoom team at this club. That's incredible. And once you get that email that you've got your recording, load that bad boy up as soon as you can because you want to watch that because now you're seeing things from the audience's perspective. That is an invaluable perspective. That's why you want to have your recordings. And it can also be useful to play about with your recordings in different ways. Maybe you turn the sound off and just watch it. So how's your body language looking? Maybe you turn the video off and just hear it. How's your vocal variety sounding, right? So you can play a lot around with the recording once you have it. But yes, you got to accept it. We've all got to get over the fact that we don't sound how we think we do in our head. Um, and we just got to embrace that and move forward. And once you do it, Yes, recording is one of the best things you can possibly do for your speaking. That's awesome. So are you admitting that you too hate the sound of your own voice like me? Oh, yeah, yeah. I hated it for a long time, a long time. But then you just sort of get, you know, used to it. You just accept, okay, I sound differently. Okay, I look different. All right, better change my perspective there. I don't look like the rock. Fair enough. And then you move <laughs> on, you know, so that, that's it. And it's a good way, I guess, for building your own confidence and awareness at the same time. 
Yeah, totally. All right. I heard your first speech, your semifinals speech on dyslexia early on. And then again, Ron was a big fan. He liked your mission. So then I, I listened in on one of your evaluation meetings that he set up for you about a month later. I couldn't believe the progress and the change of that speech. That's what made me the biggest fan. And I took a journey of improving my own speech too. Mm. One of our contest champions here, Tammy Nischek, we've also witnessed her take one speech from here to here. Can you give us any contest specific tips today? Sure, sure. Uh, well, absolutely. I think the best thing to do is give yourself a lot of time to prepare for these contests. This is a unique speaking situation. I mean, most of the time in, in, in work, in our working environments, in the real world, if you will, we can't spend hours and hours and audience after audience working on one particular presentation. But the reason you want to do it for the International Speech Contest is you've only got seven minutes to make a profound impact on your audience and you've got people all around the world competing for that right and if you want to take it seriously you should be looking to invest a lot of time in your speaking so i like to prepare i mean i'll put it this way i got beat i got beat in august right i got beat on august 24th i believe i had the idea for the speech a week later and i've been working on it from there right you don't have to be a maniac like me but having a lot of time to prepare, at least even a couple or a few months before your contest, you'll be amazed at how much your speech will evolve than if you just prepared a week in advance. So I think time is really important. You should be going around clubs, getting the feedback. Like I said before, you're too close to your own presentation. And in terms of the content of the speech itself, try to make it a topic which is relatable to the audience. I mean, the best stories are when we can see ourselves in the story. So that's what you should have in mind when thinking about your speech topic at the same time. Does that answer the question, Misty? Is that okay? Yes, thank you, Kyle. It looks like I've got the yellow light. So we're gonna go to your last question here. Okay. Now you have told me that you're working with a coach, Prez mm -hmm. Vasilev, I think is how you say it. And he won the world championship of speaking, public speaking in 2013. Can you just tell us a little bit about what it's like to work with him and how a, having a coach has helped you and what that process looks like if someone's interested? Yeah, I would estimate Prez is probably, it would probably take me about eight years to get to where I am now, where Prez has got me in maybe a year and a half. Uh, so that's how good I, I feel he is. He's, he's incredible, a incredible thinker when it comes to speaking. I've never seen someone analyze a story or think about storytelling in the way he does so he, he's about helping you know find your story bring it out off you but also develop you as a speaker and the stuff you learn it's not just for toastmasters this is the beautiful thing about the contest as well it's stuff for all presentations that you do going forward so he's changed my thinking massively in terms of how I approach the contest in terms of how I deliver stories in terms of how I view speaking so I, I can't speak of him highly enough uh yeah he's being a great asset to me and i really enjoy working with him thank you kyle well thank you so much again for being here today i hope you can stick around for our after eight session for a little more casual chit chat and we're going to go back to you mr toastmaster thanks kyle thank you misty thanks